Hello everybody, my name is Lisa Rose. I am the Festival Director for Queer Screen. Before we begin proceedings, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land of where I am, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded in Australia. This was, and always will be, Aboriginal land. Thank you for joining us for this uh, interview for the film Surviving the Silence. Uh, it's a wonderful documentary about some incredible women and incredible people who have brought about change in military um, rulings in uh, the United States of America. So we have some very exciting guests. So without any further ado, I'm going to um, welcome some of them in to the studio. Um, so first off, I'm going to welcome in uh, the director of the film, Sydney Abel. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Lisa. So happy to be with you. Thanks for being here. Um, now I'm going to welcome uh, the, the main subjects of the documentary, um, Colonel Pat Thompson and um, Barbara Brass. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello from California. Yes. Welcome. Uh, also now um, a legend and uh, all around inspiration for many, uh, many a person, um, Colonel Greta Kramer. Hello. Welcome. And now, uh, without any further ado, Eric Fanning. Eric Fanning used to be the Secretary of the Army for the United States. So thank you um, all, all, how many of us? I don't know, this is, this five, is there five of us, six of us? And welcome everybody um, down under for this, um, for this interview. Uh, so some people will probably have already watched this film and some people may watch this um, interview and be inspired to watch the film. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to get down to it. So first off, I just wanted to ask Cindy, so about the genesis of how you got involved with the project, because it's my understanding that it was quite random, that you just randomly met Pat and Barbara um, and, and heard about the story. Could you possibly just talk a little bit about that? Certainly. I was screening my first film, Breaking Through, which was about openly LGBT elected officials in the United States and the multiple barriers they had broken through in order not only to get elected, but to really live their lives with authenticity and to be out. So I had just finished screening this film at Sierra College and these two lovely women came up to me and said, hi, we're Colonel Pat Thompson and Barbara Brass and we're gonna be speaking tomorrow and we loved your film. And later on in the evening, when I was at a director's reception, they came up to me, started sharing their, their story and gave me a little sneak peek as to what they were gonna be talking about the following night. And I absolutely fell in love first and foremost with them and with their love story. And the next night I went to their speech and something told me, bring your camera, bring your tripod. So I was there early and I was all set up and boy, am I glad that I did. Afterwards, I went up to them and I said, you know, I worked my way through the 50, 60, 70 people who were waiting in line and went up to them and said, hey, I want to tell your story. And they were like, oh, OK. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I want to make a movie about your story. And they were a little taken aback, but that was the beginning. Yeah. So how what, what was your initial reactions, um, Pat and Barbara? to Sydney coming up and saying that she wanted to make a film about about your story and your lives. Well, I, I really had no idea what we were in for, but it sounded like an exciting adventure, you know? So uh, I, was, I was in for it, yes, okay. <laughs> And I also didn't know what we were uh, in for. And it it, um, it just seemed like maybe this is a better way to get the word out and educate people than us trying to go to every college and every church and every uh, civic group around the country, because that was kind of our idea was that we needed to share and get the word out and let people know who uh, who we are as LGBT community and and the respect and the rights that we we deserve and and need so much better it took a lot longer than we thought i mean time wise as far not the 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 years of time but the time energy that we've all put into it is uh, phenomenal especially cindy and um michael the dp so yeah it's been an adventure wonderful adventure 
Yeah, so Cindy, how, how long, like from, from that first meeting that you had with them to the point of, you know, releasing the film, like, like how long was that? And, and the pro like you've obviously made um, quite a few documentaries. Uh, like how did you find the process? It was a little over six years. We first started interviewing them in April of 2014. And it was a slower process that turned out to be a really happy accident. It was a slower process as funding was more challenging to get this time around, uh, just because of sometimes funding's easy and sometimes it's not. And also we were competing against presidential and other campaigns for funding. And But the good news is that it really gave us a different ending for our film. Had we finished it in 2015 or early 2016, it would have been this you know, really nice story. It would have revealed the history of the connection with uh, Colonel Greta Kammermeyer. And we would have had Eric Fanning's experience as someone who has seen the process mm -hmm. unfold and been a part of the military during those different processes. But it would not have been what it turned into. You know, really showcasing two strong, vibrant women who instead of saying, oh, we're just going to sit back and relax and enjoy life. We've done our part. But instead, they started the Rat Pack Resistance Action Tuesdays and Thursdays and, you know, protesting for a variety of social justice issues, not just LGBTQ. And also looking at, you know, what they're doing now you know, as being leaders in their own communities, not simply participants who are finally out, but actually taking leadership roles. So the process was different and it was challenging at times. And yet in the end, it gifted us with such a powerful ending that encourages people of all ages to come out and to share their story and to get involved wherever they can in creating the world they want to live in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wanted to um, talk about the the coming out, um, not only for Pat and Barbara, but also for Greta, is the way that, you know, from being closeted to being out in such a public way, um, you know, I mean, I'm the festival director for a queer film festival. Like, I'm naturally out by just my job. And you were in situations where you are in jobs where you couldn't be out to then suddenly be thrust upon being, you know, uh, spokespeople or being um, put up in, in this position that you may not have been used to. And I wanted to just sort of know what that experience um, for you was like to go from um, being so closeted to then being so out. Well, for me, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Who should answer? Oh, yeah, well, sorry, that's stupid of me when you ask multiple people the same question. Um, <laughs> let's go to you first, Greta, because obviously you were, um, it's my understanding, you, uh, because of stuff that um, that Pat did, you were able to appeal and be reinstated. And so you, you know, you were go, able to go back and serve as, as an out lesbian. So I, what was the experience like, like, you know, being well, positive and being you know, out? The first thing was uh, I was sort of a known entity to the world that I was the only lesbian in the military. And <laughs> that was my delusion. Uh, and uh, it was, um, since I had been thrown out of the military and we were waiting to hear what the federal government was going to do, it felt like my responsibility that if people were interested and uh, there was an opportunity to speak out on behalf of the thousands who were still serving in the military and could not come out, that that was my my new role, if you will, and uh, sort of looking for meaning when you've lost your career, you do look for meaning in how can you take advantage of this situation. And uh, so I gave over 130 university talks that Barbara was, uh, was uh, talking about, uh, going around to various universities, sort of telling my story because I was an example of what was going on in the military. And it was through those, uh, or through a specific university talk at Davis, that after my talk, Barbara came up and handed me her business card that had her name and Patsy Thompson's on. And I had no idea before then that 
Patsy was a lesbian. And so that was a huge shock to me uh, and sort of made me rethink uh, all of the uh, sort of the quandary that I had uh, posed to her uh, asking that she be president of my board. Uh, and, I, and I think that when you're put into a situation, it's taking advantage of it on behalf of everyone else, not for yourself. Yeah, right. So, so Patlin, obviously, Barbara, um, you strike me as someone who is very uh, open and uh, forthright and, um, you know, a fighter and a leader. And so I'm wondering, like, you know, the, the core of the story really is the love story between the two of you and the commitment that you had and the sacrifice you had to make by being closeted because of um because of Pat's career, like if you could talk a little bit to that and um, how how that experience was and and the the sacrifices that you made for love, <laughs> yeah, for love, definitely. And uh, it it changed um, in my in my heart and in my head over the years because I knew that her career was the most important part of her her life. Not, of course, I was the most important person in her life, but her career was the most important aspect of her life. And it was wonderful that she was able to, to follow it to the top. And I supported that all the way. And I did know, and, and the culture at the time was also much more closeted um, in general, even though I, I believed from early on that everybody really, if everybody did come out, if everybody in the military come at, came out all at one time, follow Greta and just say it, uh, they they could shut it down or they could just say, oh, well, okay, um, I guess if everybody's going to be removed, then maybe we better rethink this situation because there would be thousands and thousands and thousands who, who, did, who would come out, who would be uh, LGBTQ. So, yeah, I was always um, needing to be out there as much as possible, but also tempering my my vocalness and my exuberance as much as possible until most recently when I was able to find a place out in the world with uh, the resistance movement here in, in our country after the election of 2016. So that, that gave me the place to do all, exude all the energy I had and maybe still have a tiny bit left. Um, Eric, I just wanted to uh, to go to you in terms of uh, things around what may have changed since, because you know this obviously happened in the happened in the nineties, the stuff around um, around uh, uh, Greta and things. So, and then obviously, don't ask, don't tell came in, and like. It's a very different experience in Australia. Um, we were talking just before uh, we came on air about how through the Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal policy uh, process, you you spoke to um, a lot of Australian service people about their experience. And I wonder if you could just talk a little bit to, to that and what has what has really changed now um, for for people and how they can serve openly, or if they can or can't, and if they choose to. Well, I, I think what Barbara said is actually really interesting because. Um, I was working on Capitol Hill um, before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I was in the Clinton Pentagon when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was created. I was in the Obama Pentagon when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed. And really what made the difference is just humanizing the story. It, it wasn't really a decision about whether or not gays and lesbians can serve in the military. It was, about, it was a decision about updating policy to reflect the fact that gays and lesbians were already serving the military. And so... As Barbara said, every single person who comes out makes a difference. And when I was was young and just getting involved in this business, Greta was going through what she did. And even now with this documentary and Pat and Barbara's story, it, it sends a message to the country about who's a patriot, who can serve, who's qualified, uh, because just because we got Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal, it doesn't mean we're not done. We're going through the question of transgender service now. Uh, it was only in the last administration that all positions were open to women. There is still a lot more that needs to be done. And each time a story, a, a humanizing story comes out like Barbara and Pat's and, and Greta's, it makes an enormous difference for 
for those who are straight and haven't really thought about it, for military leaders and for the country as a whole. And so it certainly did for me living through, I was closeted when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was created and watching these stories, watching what Greta went through, what others went through really helped me realize that I didn't want to be in that closet anymore. I wanted to come out. Yeah, yeah, like it, it is that thing, I'm, you know, if everybody in the world just came out right now, like what are, what are they what are they going to do what are they going to do like there'd be just so many of us um I, Greta I just wanted to talk about obviously uh, a lot of people would probably have learned from your story um in Australia in particular from the wonderful film serving um uh, serving in silence uh that of course starred Glenn Close and Australia's own Judy Davis um, who played Diane um so I wanted to, uh, so that was obviously produced by Brad Streisand is that correct that's correct. Yeah. Yes. So you, you and Babs, good friends. Well, Babs and I are not exactly buddies, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, when when I was first uh, contacted about making a movie about it, and and then found out that it was Barbara Streisand who was interested, uh, my attorney and I went down to talk with her, and she said, "Wouldn't you like to have your life story told?" on national television to 25 million people. And I said, I mean, you think about it, you go from being closeted, all of a sudden the world is supposed to know that you're uh, a lesbian. And uh, she said that she thought that this was the most important social issue of the decade. And, you know, that's the time that you sort of back off and say, what can I do to help make this happen? And uh, so, you know, between her name and Glenn Close, uh, you know, and Judy Davis, you couldn't ask for a team to bring attention to this issue of gays in the military. Yeah, well, it is, it's really interesting because, you know, as a festival programmer, you, you know, you get submissions and you, you're watching a lot of films. And a lot of the time I like to watch them without knowing anything about the film. I just like to, you know, I don't even read the synopsis. I just start watching them. And so I had no idea of the connection when I started watching the film between what was happening with uh, Pat and Barbara and, and your case. And I lit, when it was revealed that it was her and I was like, I've watched that film. I remember that woman. I remember it was like just it's such a fantastical almost. Like I can totally understand, Sydney, why you were originally like, I have to make this film because it's just just the tie-in the like it's just it's just quite quite remarkable um that's not really a question that's just me rabbiting on um <laughs> about that um i wanted to ask um what am i gonna ask um about like so you've you've kind of only just started your run of this film it only it only recently had a world premiere and what sort of reception have you been getting from people um about the film and 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 how it's being received Overwhelmingly positive. One of, yes, one of our reviews in Outsmart Magazine in Houston, the author just simply wrote, go see this movie. It'll change your life. And that, I would say, kind of sums up a lot of the responses that we've gotten. You know, some people say, well, when's it coming to my city? When can I see it on Netflix? Is it on Hulu yet? You know, which is always great to hear that there is such a demand for for the film. and you know, we're pretty much blanketing the Southeast and California right now. Um, and some others that we can't mention just yet, but you know, it's great to see it in Sydney. It was in um, India before that and to see it go international as well because of the human connection. You know, I mean, yes, it's a US military story, but at its core, it's a love story. And it's a story about people saying, we need to find a way where there is not a way that's already available to us. And that's why I think it's getting the reception that it is getting. Um, there are military organizations, some LGBT focused and some not, who are actively participating and promoting this and pushing the film out to their members. And that in itself is also very gratifying, not coming from a military background. I've had to learn as quickly as I could from Pat and from Greta and from Eric and to be able to say, okay, this meets 
some degree of, of military test for accuracy and also for what is interesting, um, that's very gratifying. Yeah, so in terms of like, um, when you were both were coming out or outed, like the, did you have any support from like lesbian groups or was there any any semblance of support that you could get outside of your immediate family and and um and partner, or and do is there stuff now like can is there stuff that exists in the military for for um, LGBTIQ people to be able to get support when coming out? Sorry, who were you asking? Oh, sorry. That's yeah. I should probably say that. See, I'm, I'm basically I'm asking Greta and I'm asking uh, asking Pat. Like, if there was support that they were able to get, obviously um, that you know you both had support from your partners. But we, did you have support from anyone else during the process of, of of coming out? And do you know if there is support now available for people who are who are wanting to? Well, certainly at the time when I. Uh, sort of disclosed that I was a lesbian to the investigator. Uh, there, I didn't know of any organizations that existed, and it was through a very secure, securist route that I ended up finding Land a Legal Defense and Education Fund, uh, which was a, um, a legal organization that took on cases that would make a, uh, you know, an impact on other people's lives also. So it was not individually based, but more systemic uh, taking on the, the federal government in this case. Uh, and I, I think you have to remember that if, if anybody found out that you were gay in the military, uh, if nothing else, it was guilt by association if anybody supported you. So that you really had to find a sort of a, an underground legal network to help you. And, uh, you know, so that at least for, in my case, that's the direction that I went uh, looking for help. And I think it's depicted somewhat in serving in silence. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? What about you, Pat? Well, I never actually came out to the military, but I figured that the film would do that for me. <laughs> and it probably has, um, because uh, I was a member of a local unit here in my area and knew a lot of people in that unit. And uh, as as it gets out in the area, I'm sure that a lot of them will see it. So that's part of that. But with my family back in North Carolina, I had never come out to them. I didn't live there. I was long ways away and uh, wanted to do it, just never got it done. So when I came out to them, I was 80 years old and I thought I would be nervous. I was and I was very relaxed and they seemed to receive it very well. I think, I think they had figured things out along the way. So that helped. I wanted to also just say that as far as the military, uh, Pat, and also now I am a member of this local alumni group, and they had sent out a little message uh, a couple weeks ago if we had anything we wanted to add to their newsletter coming out in November. And I said, yeah, we're going to have our film showing uh, starting in California in uh, September. So maybe you can put that in. He said, well, that, that issue won't come out until November. But uh, so I asked, can you just send this to the alumni? And I posted the whole information, the link for buying tickets, the whole business. He said, sure, we'll send it out to 150 people. So those are all military uh, connected, whether they're, I don't know if he's including spouses, but 150 people should be getting the information here in California so they can buy their tickets. Good. Some of them in Australia, so they can, they, no, they're not, but they, they'll be good so then they can uh, watch it. Um, I saw an interview recently with you, Greta, where you talked about the fact that, you know, when you started in the military, uh, was it mar married women couldn't serve and mothers couldn't serve? Oh. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. You, couldn't, you couldn't be married and join the military. And when that changed and women were allowed to marry, then you couldn't have any dependents uh, under 16. And so that, Made. And so I was discharged 
after I was married and, and pregnant with my first son, I was discharged um, that first time in, in 1968 because I was pregnant. So I've been well, around the circle with them. Yeah, well, I just think that the military like laid their bed. Like surely if you can't have married women and that you can't have like, like that was right for lesbians to be serving in the military. If there's if, like, they shouldn't have been shocked that there were so many of them. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just need to, uh, I'm just going to wrap up now and I just wanted to see, so obviously like really like for me the key thing in this film is just an incredible enduring love story and how one can only, um, one can only hope that, you know, someone can love someone as much as uh, Barbara and Pat love each other. Um, so Cindy, I just wonder if you can kind of wrap up like what it is that you would like people to kind of take out of this film. I would like them to see that love can overcome obstacles. Barb and Pat for so long had to pretend they weren't even a couple, even in their own home. And yet they managed to maintain and really deepen and strengthen what's still a very sweet and precious love that is so visible between the two of them. And the other thing is that there was no question that Colonel Greta Kamemeyer was going to be expelled from the military. So what could Colonel Pat Thompson do? Well, she did the hardest, most dangerous to herself thing. And even while she was obeying orders and yet, so she found a way to introduce material and she found a way where there wasn't a way in order to do the best thing, not knowing how it would turn out. And it turned out with Colonel Greta Kamemeyer, an army hero being reinstated and the beginning of an anti-gay military policy in the US eventually going away and in 10 years we get to we get to celebrate in december the 10 years of the repeal of don't ask don't tell yeah yeah it's incredible you're all incredible uh i've been so honored that you've been able to join us um it's one of the benefits of this weird world that we are all currently in that we were able to um have this virtual uh screen of the film and also um this interview so thank you all very much um i'm going to uh oh, Bless Australia. <laughs> props. I love props. Um, I'm going to now uh, throw to the trailer. So if this uh, interview, if you haven't guessed what's the film, I guarantee this trailer, which really is uh, kind of put together almost like the film is a bit of a mystery thriller, to be honest. So I really hope that um, you enjoy the trailer. And if you haven't watched the film, you've got until September 27 um, on demand to watch it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pat came over. I thought she seems nice. I'll find out who this person is. I don't know if I even heard about being connected to the military. I'm not really sure when you told me, but it wasn't something that I could understand how the impact would happen. We both were resigned to the fact that we couldn't be out and that we had to really protect ourselves. I was able to build a secret passageway that went from our bedroom and the bedroom that was supposed to be my bedroom. We felt that we had to be closeted in our own home. I had a lot of anger about that. And it wasn't only our society, but it was the fact that Pat was in the military. I was asked to be the first Army National Guard chief nurse. That really rocked my world because I had no idea how I would continue on in this relationship with that long distance. But I knew I had to go. It was the top rung of my career ladder. When I got to the Pentagon, we frequently could not talk. We had to develop a code so that we could communicate when we thought lines were tapped. You were absolutely right when you were talking about the military. I just hate this oppression. It's hard for both of us. I love you for all of the tolerance that you exhibit. If I get this huge cardboard box and I started looking in it and I said, oh no, I can't do this to her. I applied for a top secret clearance. I made the statement, I am a lesbian. They said, the Army is going to start discharge proceedings against you. 
and I was stunned, embarrassed, hurt. I had always believed that the army took care of its own, and now they were coming after me. I was sad that I had to be a part of that. I'm sorry that I had to do that to you. I wasn't ready to come out until now. Please welcome Pat Thompson.